much. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Gives me once again great pleasure to announce the Springbok team to play against Ireland in the third Castle Lager Test Series this weekend. 15, Billy LaRue, 14, Ruan Combrink, 13, Lionel Mapu, 13, 12, Damien Delendi, 11, J.P. Peterson, 10, Elton Yankees, number 9, Faf de Klerk, 8, Warren Whiteley, 7, Sia Kulisi, 6, Francois Lowe, 5, Peter Steff de Toy, 4, Eben Atzebeth, number 3, Franz Mullerbe, number 2, Adrian Strauss, captain, number 1, Tendaim Tawarira, 16, Bongu Manambi, 17, Stephen Kitsoff, 18, Julian Redling Ace, number 19, Franco Mostert, number 20, Jakub Krill, 21, Rudy Page, 22, Mona Stein, and 23, Loazi Mvovo. I think the referee would be Mr. Glenn Jackson. Alistair, the changes made, uh, of all the changes made, just the one not enforced by injury, is this uh, yet another vote of confidence in many respects of, of those who have played the last two Saturdays? I think it's more tactical change than uh, a vote of confidence. I think uh, I'm so pleased with the players, uh, you know, with the way they have responded last week. I'm pleased with the work ethic in the team. I'm pleased with the attitude. But I've always said we I can make a tactical change that would benefit the team. I'll do that. Bringing Ron Combrink, Combrink into the side gives us another right-footed kicker, which we don't have with Faf Elton and Valila Rue at the back. And, uh, you know, it's not it's noted to see that Ireland has been kicking down that left touchline and that left inside. So Combrink gives us that right-foot opportunity. And secondly, he brings us... Uh, an additional goal kicker from, from 50 metres out, you know. So, uh, on top of that, I think he's shown great form last week. Do you think it's also a possibility that it forces Ireland to play differently, or do you expect them to test that wing as they have done throughout the series? No, look, uh, it will be tests across the field. Uh, they will, there will be contests and little battles, and uh, we expect that. I think they... It's the end of this the, the season, basically, and they will come hard. They'll come hard. They will know there's one chance to clinch the series. But we were prepared. We were prepared. We also have our own motivation and ambition. And uh, we're up for any test that will be thrown our, our, our way this weekend, uh, be it, uh, with, you know, tactically, be it in the physicality stakes, you know, be it in a set-piece battle. So I, I'm sure with, uh, there will be something new from the Irish. They... Uh, quite a clever coaching group uh, and team that they have, um, but, but we prepared. Coming out of the Cape Town test, uh, you had various aspects that you were disappointed with and you targeted those as areas for improvement in Johannesburg and for the first half you didn't get those improvements. What do you think was the turning point? Yeah, uh, look, it's a combination of things and, and the one uh, big thing for me in Cape Town test is I must say how the pressure really gotten to the players. I never expected that, that it was uh, the responsibility was quite huge and you expect that, uh, you know, the young boys, um, because they knew in the setup, they were just taken to it, you know, just take to it. Uh, but uh, in the final analysis, they were a bit nervous and that's, that's reality. But it's, you know, improved a lot in the second test and I think the, they must understand from me, I don't coach out of fear, uh, and it's a matter of sticking to our processes. Uh, despite of what has been said and been written out there, this is a side that's in, 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 in a, not in a building phase, but we're definitely putting something together that would be really expected to be really hitting the straps in, after a couple of tests. So, uh, yes. The technical stuff we weren't happy about, and I spoke about body height in the carries, I spoke, spoke about a lot of other detail, but I think for the third test, the most important thing is you have to be switched on for this, and there should be no other motivation or lack of motivation but by yourself. You should look at uh, intrinsically the motivation. It's, uh, you know, it's playing for the series, and our players understand that, and I think the second half of last week gave them uh, you know, a hell of a lot of confidence and we would like to start like we left off. Many fabulous contributions off the bench uh, a week ago in Johannesburg. 
two of those players get an opportunity to start through injury. And, and looking down this bench, uh, a lot of inexperience, but uh, I'm sure excitement as well. Very much so. I think excitement, and that's what you would like to, to see uh, when they do come off the bench again, keep giving us that impact. Um, the players who start, it's not just uh, absorbing stuff. We would like to see that they, uh, we start well. We start much better than the previous test. We, you know, we, we, we get it right from the start. And uh, when we do introduce the bench, you know, we, we, we should really up the ante in the last stanza of the game. And uh, hopefully we can see that uh, sort of uh, combination working in tandem this week. But it's important for us to, to, to play with that intensity, physical intensity from a word go. Staying on that theme of the bench, three potential test debutants on the bench. Just a word for all three of them. No, I think if you just looked at the way Fuff de Klerk started his first test in Cape Town, and uh, not overawed, but uh, you know he accepted and embraced all challenges, every challenge, and uh, he really had a good game. It's just play, you know, from whistle to whistle and uh, forget about anything else. Uh, know your job and do your job. And I think that's important for any new cap that steps up, you know, is to contribute. He's got the role to play. He's be able to do that and uh, execute that role. Dwayne Vermeer and out injured with paving the way for Warren Whiteley to start. How, how different do you see them as players? And how does that affect the way you will approach the game and the game plan? Now, uh, look, there will always be um, two different number eights, two different hookers, two different open siders in any game, two different types of fly -ups. I'm just uh, happy that I've got both, you know, Dwayne and um, Warren Whiteley in the mix. So uh, we know how Dwayne, how competitive he is in the physical exchanges, um, how, how defensively, how strong he is. Then Warren brings something different how effective he could be in the wide channels uh, how much ground he can cover on the field and the try he scored was actually in the wide channels being there at the right time and uh, you know both bring a, a hell of a lot of leadership with them to support Adrian so uh, I, I'm just happy that uh, for Ryan's sake he's been you know playing consistently well over the last couple of seasons and uh, it's a great opportunity for him. Can you talk a little bit more about Adrian Strauss and his leadership role in, a, as you say, a, a young, very inexperienced team and, and the role that he's played in, in picking them up to where they got to at the, by the final whistle in Johannesburg? Absolutely. I think Adrian has played a tremendous, a huge role in that. People might look at Adrian and they look at some other hookers who are contributing in broken play and uh, they're all over the field and Arin is a typical set piece uh, type of hooker who will make sure that functions and that is where test rugby starts if you look at two two games we've had 16 line outs in the first test we lost one almost 94 percent in the second test we had 14 line outs we missed one almost 93 or 94 percent again so in both tests it showed is his, his value as under pressure against a quality uh, Irish liner defensive team. And uh, we've missed two line outs. And uh, I'm not comparing, but you look at Rory Best, he might be running around, he might be making huge tackles here, but they're currently sitting on a 70% success rate at line out time. That is Andre Strauss. You look at Andre's ball carrying, uh, you know, as a tight forward, and he brings that. Damien Stry uh, is. Uh, consequence of how he carried and got momentum over the gain line and generated quick ball and it was one-on-one -on -one with Damien in a corner. But it's little things that maybe go unnoticed and not the flesh and that is what Un uh, Adrian brings to the team. And also his calm and collectedness when it comes to decision making. Um, he's got a great demeanor of handling everyone's input and, and you know sort of filters that and hit the right note. So I'm really proud of Adrian, the way he's conducted and, and led the team, not on the field and also off the field. Very new scrumming unit and uh, Matt Proudfoot spoke in the week about the, the need for time together as a unit. Are you happy that uh, you've ironed out a, a couple of issues there? Yeah, I think so. It's working progress. The thing is, is what we need to understand that there will always be s small little <coughs> 
a trek that's come time. Every, every international team will come up with uh, sort of a, a reset when they're under, under a bit of a pressure and then how to relieve the pressure, you know, and reset. So with Beast, Adrian, and uh, in France, it's a new combination. And, uh, and, and we've, they've got to get used to that, get used to each other, know when to help. The hooker needs to help the loose head more, when the hooker needs to support the tight head more. Like, like, you know, the more they scrum together, the better they will become. And uh, I'm pleased with uh, the scrums on our ball. We really had some good, solid platforms for, for the backs to, to launch attack from. Uh, it's just on their ball where we sometimes get caught out, but we've looked at that. And uh, hopefully we can get that uh, spot on this weekend again. Based on the way that the contests have developed and evolved over the last two weeks and going into the final one of a three test series, do you expect Ireland to change anything? Are you yeah, I think Ireland might be looking at, at regaining possession much more than just kicking it deep, going you know from the kickoff nice and short to contest that. And uh, territory is the game, you know. So, so that will probably be one of the things that you've got to be on the lookout for, is uh, make sure from kickoffs we we cover the whole field nicely. I also think they uh, they will have to to have a go more than the previous two tests, and uh, and, and keep ball in hand. You know, that's what we're expecting uh, this weekend, and you know, still continue to turn to turn us. So. Uh, it's going to be a true test in the sense that uh, uh, out wide they've got a new centre combination. So we will want to get the ball into Trimble's end more than previous two. Uh, but, but we've got to make sure that we cover all areas. You know, uh, No defensive structure is watertight, so there will always be space on the field. But uh, we have a, sort of a good feel what, what to expect. Just finally from us, despite the disappointment that I know you and the players felt for large parts of last week, how important was that last 20 minutes for the mental fortitude of this team going into a series decider? Massively important. Uh, like I said, you know, you, it's how much you want it, how much we want it as a team. That's the theme for this weekend. Um, at this level, you don't have to look for any external motivation. You represent the Springboks, you make sure that you switch on and you turn up. And that's, uh, that's the bottom line. You are capable of putting it together. You do the basics well, you hold on to the ball when we're in their area. In terms of a kicking game, you execute the kicking plan and uh, we work for each other as a team. And, you know, it's, it sounds simple, but that's what I'm looking for. This test is going to be right down in the trenches again. and. Uh, we, we have to be able to, to slog it out in the trenches. And when there's opportunity in open field play, I think we've got the pace and we've got the, the skill to contest in broken and open field play as well. But uh, it's, 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 as a coach, I can't be motivating players, not for a series decider. Players understand that. So hopefully we'll pitch up and do that. Thank you, Matthew. We'll open the floor for questions now. Huh? Alex, um, it's interesting. Um, you, you made less changes than maybe their popular opinion uh, they wanted, but uh, interesting in, in the front row, um, you know, perhaps people will look at the scrums and, and say that if we took a few penalties, uh, you know, France also coming, uh, you know, maybe a little bit undisciplined at the rucks as well. Um, in, in terms of rewarding form, um, how did you? I'll do that one. Now, I'm the coach. I make the decision and what the opinions out there, Stephen. I, yeah, I, I look at uh, France. Why is he made the, the, the you know, it's uh, sometimes when the tackle is made, the Irish players on our side, it's difficult to get over that body. And I address that to, with the referees. So the easiest way or the a way to get to the cleaner is from that side. But no excuse for France. He conceded three penalties at rock time. And I don't, I, if I must look at a play, you conceding penalty, you can now you drop. They, they, I, I don't work like that. France has got other attributes where he's made 10 tackles, where he's, uh, you know, at the breakdown area, got up and what we call tanked, slowed their ball down so many times. So I do look at other contributions. On our ball, France has been excellent at scrum time. And, and I don't think he's been penalized at scrum time. I think it, uh, it, it went the other side, but you know, it's not like 
I've got to watch now who, who makes mistakes. Players will make mistakes. Players will make mistakes. And one has got to be careful to, uh, to, to just look what has gone wrong. And I'm sure Julian is playing a terrific, terrific uh, role for us off the bench. And by that, I don't say he's an impact player. And my one-on-one -on -one I had with Julian, uh, I was as open as I can be like I'm telling you now, he's not an impact player. But I think it's important to build continuity and make sure that if you want to become a dominant scrum, if you want to become a dominant pack, I think Titans do have to have more time together. Uh, Kitsi, obviously, uh, <clears throat> really also excited for Kitsi to get an opportunity. Kitsi is a very, very strong ball carrier that you all know as Lucid. He's uh, defensively solid, and uh, you know Kitsi runs good lines, and, and that's what we're looking for Kitsi to bring, not neglecting his is scrummaging. Now JP has been solid. I mean, the last uh, few kickoffs we had in the second half, he, he fielded both, and he won both back for us in the year. So I'm really happy with JP's aerial skills. Uh, you know, I, I still feel JP can do more, and we had a discussion. You know, I want him to be more involved. Um, he can really go look for a bit, bit more work, and uh, hopefully we'll see that this weekend with both him and Ruan. Uh, wingers, are, um, there's no excuse for wingers not to get involved more because our plan is of such that they can come off the line and look for work. So I'm looking for both Ruan and JP to do that this weekend because they could be destructive physically and they got you know pace sort of to punch off nine and off ten, inside ten. I mean, the try that we scored is exactly what we saw. JP got an inside ball, and he got huge momentum for us, and, and uh, Warren Whiteley's try was uh, the result of that. I hope so. He's been magnificent the second half. He's uh, done the basics right. The second half was a matter of us just, you know, sort of getting motion uh, from depth, we were very static in the first half, off nine and off ten. And I hear a lot of people say, you, you know, the ball must go to tens in men's most of the time. <laughs> the rugby has changed, please. Uh, we, we do need the pack on slow ball to give us momentum. The only problem we had is, um, is our, we were static and standing still. But second half, we got it right where we were in motion and, and, and we got nice momentum. It was difficult to stop Damien, Peter Steff did two eight. Those guys running onto the ball. Sorry, you can go ahead. The um, selection of Ruan um, over the last did you travel for the past a while, or you know, more than 30 in the week that it's a tactical move in the internet? When we had Patrick here, I wasn't a concern, you know, to have Loazi there, because then we had, have had the right booter in the team. But obviously, with Patrick out, now we have only we have Elton Fuff both. Or if I should play Pages, then it won't be an issue, you know. Then Loazi comes into the mix, but Ruan just gives us that option. Sorry, Percy. Sorry, because I was also asking, just follow up on your previous answer. If you're saying you guys had a, a, a great second half, but in hindsight, is that the performance you guys were looking for going to this match, though? Um, or do you not want to start perfectly, though, again, in, in Yeah, we'd like to. Just to start well, obviously that's the intention, but somehow we we, we can't uh, put it together by conceding a, a penalty here, uh, you know, rip ball out of end, lose ball in contact, and that actually is uh, the problem in knocking the ball against the pole or missing a conversion. So it is a combination of things, and and uh, that doesn't allow the scoreboard to reflect how close it really was in the second half, and we had huge opportunities. So. Uh, if the execution would be better in the first stanza, I think we'll, we, if we can put it together, you'll see a similar performance like the, like the second half. We have two emotions in, in the other spot match, or the other spot match. You have a first, a first, first half of fans turning against you, and a second half of fans backing you guys with that performance. What is your, what is your word to your Nelson Mandela by fans? I like the emotion of after the game of the fans. That's a perfect one we're looking for. The match is not finished after after the game, after 80 minutes. And, and to me, irrespective of three poor halves that we've played, a uh, rugby match doesn't consist of a half. It consists of a full game 
So I'm really happy that we finished like that in the second half, and that's a full game, and, and that's what the scoreboard reflects. So we, we're looking to, you know, sort of play for 80 minutes and put it together. And uh, but if not, the team that finishes stronger, for me, it's it's uh, is on the right the right way, on the right road or right track. Yes. Uh, Alistair, um, Nelson Mandela Bay statement, it's a perfect setting for, for a, a deciding test match. Would you, would you go with that in terms of the, the passion and atmosphere that the team can possibly uh, leverage off on Saturday? I think they will definitely draw from um, the massive support in, in PE. It's a fantastic venue and uh, um, you know, a knowledgeable crowd, um, fanatic you know, sort of fans as well. Um, and, and we will definitely, and I think in that second half when we started at Ellis Park building that mom momentum and pressure, you could feel the, the crowd also behind the players and they do draw from that. So we will definitely use that to Saturday. <coughs> We've got a backline, a, a, a guy that uh, runs the backline and normally he works closely in this Elton Yankees who works closely with uh, with the skipper in running the play and, and dictating things from the back. But you mentioned in New Orleans that you would prefer a forward um, taking over one if, if Adam Stoddard had been able to that's still the case this uh, You asked me about second in charge. And so I, excuse so me, Percy. Moment, if, if Adam Stoddard had been able to do it. We will decide that on Saturday. The um, um, I'm not big on pointing vice captains. Let me put it that way. I've got a guy uh, as a a backline who, who, who sort of uh, dictates or makes calls with and, uh, Adrian, but it doesn't necessarily mean he is the vice captain, to put it that way. If anything should happen to Adrian, and then I'll give Warren Whiteley, obviously, the armband to lead the team for Saturday. Does that make you happy, sir? Thank okay, thank you. <laughs> 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 team to face Ireland in the third and deciding test matches. Uh, two changes to the run on 15 with Warren Whiteley replacing the injured Dwayne Vermeulen while Ruan Combrink, fresh from scoring a try on debut is handed uh, the number 11 jersey. There's a lot of continuity across the rest of the field uh, with Faf de Klerk and Elton Yankees the halfback bearing while Vali Laruche, P. Peterson, Lionel Mapu and Damian Dialendi starting for the third successive game. Tendam Tawarira, Adrian Strauss in front, Small Herb make up the front row, while Ivan Itzabet and Peter Steff Dutoy are the lock bearing yet again. Francois Lowe, Siakolisi, and Whiteley making up the loose trio. Well, there's possible debuts on the cards out in Port Elizabeth. Stephen Kitsov, as well as Jako Krill, named amongst the replacement. Uh, while there's Mornay Stain and Rudy Page also looking for much needed game time. Loazim Vovo dropping down to the bench as uh, he was replaced uh, by Ruan Kombrink.